Hello, everybody. Welcome to Vic's Creative Corner. I'm Vic. We're going to talk about a streaming application. Um, it's going to be very similar to OBS or Streamlabs. It's called Twitch Studio. As you can see, that's right here. We're going to launch it right now. So you're probably going to see my stuff pop up, like my, my stuff I've already set up. But we're going to actually do this as like brand new for you all. So you all know how to set things up. And Twitch has made it so it's pretty user friendly. So if you wanted to do a starting, uh, starting screen, you could technically go to starting and you can go in here and edit some things. We're literally just jumping into this. Um, you can go to the countdown. You can actually come over here to the timer and change it to five minutes if you needed to. You could stop the timer. You could reset the timer, which I think is pretty neat. Um, you can start it again. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like that for a minute. You can change the text here. So you can change it to whatever you would like here. We're just going to go ahead and put starting soon, just like it had. Um, but if you have overlays, and we're going to use a different overlay setup than the one I already already got set up here, the overlay setup I'm going to use is actually coming from VBI, uh, Visual by Impulse, and it's their luxury their luxury stuff. So we can change the wallpaper if we want. Wait, is this labeled as a media source? It is not. Okay, so for media source, we're going to delete this wallpaper because it's an image. We're going to go to add a layer. And you're going to see all of these wonderful things. We're going to select media. I'm going to go to add. And I'm going to resize it. We're going to ignore the counter. I mean, that's not what we're worried about right now. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go to browse. And you can browse up here. Oh, we're going to go to overlays. And we're going to go to the luxury animated stream package. Because this is the one by Visual by Impulse. So we can go to screens. And one thing you're going to notice is you're going to want to always go to all. So that way you're able to see all files. This is their starting soon screen. So we're going to select it, which is pretty cool, right? So we're going to drag this to the very bottom here. That way we're able to see the background. I definitely want to keep the countdown, right? So I'm going to move the countdown over here. That way we can see the countdown. I'm going to move the text over here as well. I don't need the text background box, though, because we already got a background that's nice and animated. So we're going to delete that. If you want your chat to show up here, you can have your chat on your starting screen. Me, personally, I don't. So I'm going to delete that. And I don't usually have my alerts on my, um, my starting screen. So we're going to delete that as well. Now, if you have music, you can come to media, add, and I'm going to call this, rename it, um, overlay music. You can name it whatever you want. We're going to go to, oh, <laughs> that's the background. <laughs> Oops. Uh, <laughs> sorry, y'all. I got my medias mixed up. Okay, we're going to rename this one to Overlay Music. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had found that a little humorous. All right, so Overlay Music. Now we're going to browse for our file, right? So we're going to go here. And I like to keep most of my stuff pretty much in the same place. So I'm going to go back to my stream, go back to music, select all because you want to see all your files. And uh, we'll just choose, you know what? I suppose this one. We're going to select. OK, I can hear my music. So that's cool. But the music is a little distracting, so I'm going to mute it for right now. And this is basically my little music area. But we honestly don't need to worry about that, so we're not going to mess with it right now. But you can turn it on right before you go on stream. Uh, that way you're able to hear the music that's starting up as you get ready for your stream. So that's our starting screen in a, in a nutshell, like literally. We, we can 
resize this maybe. So that way it looks like this starting soon. Bring it in a bit. Uh, let's see if maybe we can. Uh, Uh, maybe we should put it up here and then the counter like right here. Yeah, that looks good, right? So now we're going to save it. And that's going to be our, our starting screen. Pretty cool, right? All right, so we can do the next one as well. Oh, I forgot to show y'all. Do you see this right here in your activity feed? You're able to see who subs. You're able to chat. Now, if you're live, and I don't get to show you, but when you click on start stream, what's really cool about this is it's actually going to, if you're playing a, if you're only on one monitor, it'll actually let you see the incoming chat. It'll let you see how many viewers you'll be able to see who's in your discord all from your screen without having to actually be displaying the application, which is really cool. I learned that, but I, I'd have to actually be live and I don't know if I can record that live. I haven't tried it yet. I suppose we can do a test video to do so. So the next one we're gonna work on is gameplay. All right, so it says no webcam detected. I have a webcam on, we're gonna get there. All right, so we're gonna go into edit because that's what you're gonna do when you set stuff up. Uh, it says no signal. Honestly, the cool thing about this is it's gonna pick up on whatever game capture device you have. So here's our game ca capture device, right? And I have currently going, oh yeah, I I was making sure my controller was up to date. Yep. <laughs> All right, here we go. We'll, we'll just leave that on for now. And if you notice, it tells you it's 1080p because that's the height. All right, so we can edit if we need to, if we wanted to change this. We could actually come here, go to the screen link. Um, if I was actually showing my entire monitor, I would come here. If I was showing a PC game, I would come to full screen application. So I'm going to select cancel just because I have a Nintendo Switch hooked up right now, which I think is really cool that it's intuitive to, and smart enough to know what is connected. And it's going to go with the first thing that it can pick up signal on, which I think is freaking awesome. If I didn't have my capture card selected, um, it would have picked up on a PC game. It would have picked up on the last game application that I was playing, which I think is really cool about their software. There are, there are some things that I don't like about the software, and we're going to get there. <laughs> All righty. So alerts. It has its own alerts here, but if you prefer to have a custom widget, and you can rearrange these anywhere you want on your screen, right? I usually keep my alerts like towards the bottom here. I used to have them like right into my uh, middle of my screen, but uh, I like them at the bottom. But I don't like their alerts, right? But we can preview the alert. Check it out. We're previewing the alert. But I don't like that alert. It's pretty basic. It's cool. I mean, you're able to see what's going on. But if you've got custom stuff, for example, Streamlabs or um, you know, uh, stream elements, whatever it was that you signed up with, it's, it's going to be something you can actually add. So we're going to come here, we're going to click on delete. And I'm actually pulling up my alert box right now. All right, so I'm going to copy my widget. And what I'm going to do is go to add a layer, and I'm going to select browser source. And I am going to paste my link here and then select the arrow because this will actually load it. Now, the thing that I've learned about this when you're actually previewing your widget, you want to make sure that you are able to pull up a test somewhere. And see how you're only able to see just a little bit of it? We've got to resize that. Okay. Custom page resolution. And I need to see what my resolution is in one area. Give me just a second now. 
Okay, so in my particular, I have 655 by 370, which is more than enough for me, right? So I'm going to shrink this box down a bit and bring it down here. And now I'm going to test my alert again. And there it displays correctly. The only reason I know this is because I have it set up in OBS as such. So it's, it's going to show up the way that I have it, the way that I want it. Um, webcams. That's the next thing I guess we can talk about. I don't really need to worry about the wallpaper because the background is always going to be my gaming. So we're just going to leave it as is. So I can remove the background. And same thing with chat. We can uh, we can do a test chat. So that's the normal chat function that the software has. But honestly, I have a custom widget. So we're going to go and select my custom widget here. And I'm going to copy my link real quick. And then I'm going to see the size that I have because I have this set up specifically in OBS. So mine is 6 by 800. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to delete this box because I could keep it simple and it would show up on stream that way, but that's just not the way that I want to do it. So I'm going to come over here to browser source again. And I'm going to add, I'm going to paste my link here. I should probably rename this. We're going to call it chat 2.0. And we're going to rename this alert 2.0. Okay, so with chat, oh, let me paste my link here. All right, now we're going to do custom page resolution. And I think in my case, mine was backwards where the, the width was 600 and the height was 800, if I'm not mistaken. I think I did it right. Yeah, I did. Okay, yeah, here we go. So I usually keep my chat to the left. Everybody's different on how they want their layouts to be. So I'm going to test it again. Hey, what's up? And now you're able to see the chat that I prefer to show up. So it is customizable, just like OBS, just like Streamlabs, just like any other streaming software that you might want to use. But this is more so directly through Twitch. And Twitch has tried to make it as user-friendly as, as it can be. And I applaud them for it. All right, so now we're gonna set up our webcam. Webcams are a little funny. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pick my Elgato face cam. Hey, everybody. All right, we're gonna select done. And we can come here to green screen effect. Clearly y'all see I have a green screen, right? This is no bueno. I have more control over this in, OB in OBS. So that's one thing I was learning that I didn't like is their green screen stuff. So similarity, right? We want to get rid of the green. So that's good. Um, edge transparency. You know what? We don't really need to worry too much about edge transparency. But if, if you see that, look, I'm turning into a ghost here on TV. All right. We can probably still work with some similarity here just so that way we can reduce the fuzz a bit, but then we might be adding in some noise. We could do edge color correction, which is what made me invisible, but honestly, we're not going to need that. So this is as good as it's going to get. Now, they add a border automatically on the inside. I got to love Twitch for that, but uh, you can round it out if you want, which, and I love that it's purple like Twitch. <laughs> I really do. Um, but we can uh, change the size of that border if we wanted to. Um, personally, I like minimalistic looking borders. I, I, I do, I think they're prettier that way. You can change the color up here if you want to. Uh, I don't really care to, but you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll change it just for demonstration purposes. We'll go with green. Green looks good, right? And uh, if you didn't want a border, you can just turn it off. There you go. All right. So the next thing, and as you can see, I mean, it's literally just like the setup that I have when I'm using OBS. And I love that. I do. And I like that it, it tells you how big the camera size should be. <laughs> like I have not edited the camera size at all. So like if, 
I was streaming directly through through their um, platform, the Twitch Studio. Uh, this is literally the camera size that they recommend for you. So it's already pre-selected for you, which I think is great for people who are like, well, how do I resize or how do I do something? It's already there. It, it, you just basically fill in the blanks. So I, I love that it's very simple and intuitive that way. So we've made all of these changes, right? We've added our chat. We've added our alert box. We've added our webcam. And we have our capture card going. So we're just going to save this. Um, let's go ahead and talk about audio sources real quick here because I think you're getting familiar with how to set everything up. So the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to come over here. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I meant to select this. So right now, the audio is traveling through OBS and not through Twitch Studio. But if I were to go live, it would actually carry through here as well. I have all these audio sources here as a microphone. Excuse me. All right, so I could change this by selecting the settings, and it's telling you your volume. Like, are you too low? Are you just right? Or are you peaking it too high? And you don't really want to ever be peaking because you're going to hurt like your viewer's ears. So you don't want to do that. You can rename whatever I call this Wavelink uh, Stream Elgato Wave 3. I leave it as is. That way I know what this particular line is that I'm doing as my input. So I just leave it. Um, my stream effects microphone comes through it, um, so I'm good. Now this right here where you see unmute stream, this is going to your viewers. This is your input. But honestly, because everything is routed through Wavelink, it's coming through my microphone with the exception of the music that I set up on our starting screen. So we're going to go to here. And if we wanted to do a be right back or adjust chatting, we would do the same process for those as well. And same thing if you wanted to do an ending screen. You could basically use the starting screen, except that you could remove a couple of things and just kind of copy it a different way. But I wanted to show you all, this is how you would be setting it up through OBS Studio. I mean, um, Twitch Studio. <laughs> and it's very similar to OBS. But uh, if you wanted to see how my setup is, I did it this way. Yep, I haven't, I haven't played with the camera on mine. Right, so it's going to show you how I do that. Now, the reason why you see the transition going from left to right, and I will show you that because that's something that we can probably fix here very quickly. We'll, we'll go here. Um, I remember how I did it. Uh, I think this is the one I forgot how to do. <laughs> but hold on, I'll figure it out. Alrighty, everybody. So it, it took me a moment, but here we go. You can change some settings in here, and this is actually the next area I was going to take you to. So you can do your stream quality. You can re-optimize all the time. But I always stream in 1080p. I think that's the highest you can do in Twitch. And it already does it for you. It tells you 60 FPS, and it's going to be 6,000 on the bit rate. And this is going to be the encoder that I use. So it's automatically pre-selected. Um, you can do advanced overrides if you need to, although I don't, I mean, it worked pretty well. I tested it the other night. I was so excited to do this video. Um, here's your stream settings. So you could do this. You could uh, do VODs. You could do your clips, etc. So I think this is really cool. You can come in here and you can actually have some customization of just like you would on the browser. Um, you can save your files to whichever path you select. And your audio, just like we saw the audio in the section at the very bottom, you can always come here to settings and do it. Um, you can do advanced audio mixer. Uh, I did install the advanced audio mixer on mine. And you can do all of this. It even has a noise gate and compressor and a noise suppressor, which I think is really cool. I have not seen other programs do that with the exception of the microphone, for example, Elgato and their Wave 3, um, the VSTs, and um, I want to say Discord. And then, of course, you could customize it through a filter in OBS as well. So there's some streaming platforms that let you do it. I'm surprised to see Twitch have this, so I think this is really awesome, especially for somebody who doesn't know how to do those things or doesn't have the time to 
I want to say, do it through VSTs is probably the best way that I would explain it. You could just come here, switch it on, and not even have to fidget with anything. And your microphone will sound great. You can set up hotkeys for everything too. Me personally, I have a stream deck, so I'm not going to worry about it. But transitions, this is what we were getting to. I selected wind, but there are so many, so many transitions that you can select from. Now, the one thing I am upset about, I cannot use my own transitions. I can't use my own stingers. So, um, stringers, sorry. Right? No, I said stingers right the first time. Sorry, y'all, I'm having a moment. But um, all of these, all of these are available directly in their program. It's baked in. It's not bulky. It's not clunky. It's not going to add additional stuff you don't need. Um, this is specifically just for Twitch. It's a Twitch Studio streaming software, and it's beta. So, you know, it, it always has room for improvement. Um, but so far, I am digging it. I think this is probably the most simplified streaming software I have seen aside from learning OBS. And this is because of the knowledge that I have learned over the years of learning how to do streams, setting it up, etc. This is by far the easiest to do. And I like this transition because it's pretty much the closest one that I, I feel is on point with what I was going with. So I keep it this way. And it's already pre-filled out for you. You can even do in-game overlays. Not that I need to worry about that, but I think this is really handy. So if I wanted to switch between here, you're able to see that transition. I think it's pretty awesome. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is Stream Deck and integrating Twitch Studio with it. So if you haven't installed Twitch Studio, you can always come here, type in Twitch, and then install it. So I'm going to close out the store because I already have it installed. And uh, at first, when I, when I was playing with this, I was kind of laughing at myself because it's like, well, how do I add my camera? How do I do this? So it took me a while. So here's our scenes, right? And uh, we're going to go ahead and do, ooh, I don't even know which starting scene I selected. Let's find out. Ah, OK, cool. And then I can come here, and I have a gameplay section. So I'm guessing it's the second one. There we go. Uh, no, that's not the right one. OK, it's the first one. There we go. I was like, wait a minute. I didn't have a green screen showing. All right, so the next one we're going to do is our audio sources, right? This is one thing I'm a little upset about. I can't see what my audio sources are right now, so I can't really switch to them. Um, I'm probably going to have to send that in as a bug later. But yes, you can technically add your audio sources just like you would in OBS or in Streamlabs. So you should be able to ideally see what your inputs are to make those changes. And same thing with your stream. I think the first one is the one that mutes and unmutes the stream. No, it might be the second one then. It's one of these. Ah, okay, that muted my mic, see? It's honestly trial and error because I have no idea what's what. But I do know that since we haven't done the last one, it'll probably, it's muting something, but I just don't know what. Right, we already did that one. Okay, see, it's kind of like playing with a needle in a haystack here, but I can't figure out what those other sources are. But at least I know I can mute my mic if I need to. All right, so the next one that we're going to do is our layers. So I'm going to go to my gameplay, right? And if I wanted to turn off my webcam, I can now do that. So it's just like using Stream Deck with OBS but in Twitch Studio. Like, it is really awesome. You have where you can actually record gameplay if you didn't want to go live. You can actually record it from Twitch Studio, which I think is really awesome. Um, and then you have streaming. So when you're ready to go live, you would just hit this button right here. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm afraid to hit go live right now because, um, yeah, my screen's a mess right now. My, my OBS screen, not, not my Twitch Studio. 
Uh, I guess we could do it, so that way I could probably give you a preview of what it looks like on the screen here. But we're going to go ahead and uh, close this out, because honestly, it, it's just pretty much rinse and repeat. You select whatever is on your gameplay screen. I wanted to turn off my alerts. Oh, wait, wrong one. Okay, if I wanted to turn off my alerts or my chat, I could. Um, if I wanted to turn off my gameplay, I could. But we're not going to worry about that. I mean, I kept it pretty basic just to show you this video. All right, so let's go ahead and do the streaming real quick and see. We're just going to do a test. It's just a test stream. I'm not live for real on Twitch, y'all. Um, but it is going to be a test stream. So that way you all can see. Uh, you know what? I don't know if I can pull up a PC game while doing this. Hold on. Hold, please. All right. Um, I had a game the other day. I did put up Lost Ark, didn't I? Oh, well. It's going to be wrong. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. So what I need to do is come here. And I'm going to change my... I'm going to change my game screen real quick. Uh, here we go. Edit, change. We're going to change it to a full screen application. And we can select the window. In this case, I'm selecting Chrono Trigger, right? We're going to save. And now we're going to hit the go live button. All right. So there we go. We've started the stream. Oh, I, I think it would help if I hooked into my controller here. Now, here's the cool thing. I can't see myself on camera because I'm literally in the full screen application, right? But y'all can see me if I'm live right now. And we're going to press it. We're just going to resume. I don't even know what I selected. Oh, you know what? Let's exit this area. But do you see it up here where it says live, the camera, the microphone? And then your viewers. I know it looks all itty bitty, but it's to the top left. I think that's pretty cool that you're able to see that. So if somebody was texting you or saying, hey, what's up? Look at that. It pops up on your screen. Although you're probably seeing like double chats and that's just because I'm showing you another recording screen. So it's pretty neat. I think that's pretty cool. And now we're gonna end the test stream. Okay. The only way I know how to do that is actually just doing alt tab and close account. <laughs> but you, you get the idea. So I suppose just so that way we have something displayed on the screen here so you all can see it. We can come back here and we can change it from the video game we were just in back to our capture card. And uh, there you go. So it's very easy to switch between your devices and then when you're going live it's able to you're able to see who's viewing who's chatting so if you're just a one monitor person or you don't have a dual monitor or you have a widescreen and you don't want to compromise screen realty this application is amazing because you can be in your full pc game and you're able to go full screen on your pc game and you're able to see those little details um I think when you're actually playing on, on another monitor or something like, for example, a console or whatever, it's going to be right in front of you, which I think is pretty cool. But um, me, I have a dual monitor. I prefer a dual monitor mainly because I like to use one for all of the applications and the other for gaming. And that's why you're able to see what I'm recording on the other monitor right now. But uh, it's pretty, I know somebody's probably going to flag me down and say that's not the right game, but oh well, it was for test stream purposes. But I hope this has helped you figure out what you wanted to do as far as using Twitch Studio. Um, it was pretty awesome for me. And I just wanted to thank you all for uh, giving me some time to show you Twitch Studio. And I'm excited. I hope you all enjoyed using this application as much as I've enjoyed showing it to you. And uh, I know it's limited on some features, but honestly, some of these features are really awesome. Anyways, you all have a lovely evening, and I will see you all next stream.